Hello everybody, today we are going to solve an example problem on the Nike plot and Nike stability analysis. Okay, so the goal is understanding whether this system is stable or not using the Nike plot. Okay, so in this system, the open loop transfer function is this. Okay, s plus 1 divided by s square. Okay, and uh, we need to draw the Nike plot of this transfer function, and then we need to look at the answer component of minus 1 to talk about the stability of the whole system. Okay, so let's change the colors and move on with this. As you can see, this Nike or this uh, transfer function has an integrator, double integrator indeed, at the origin, which means that we have two poles here and one pole here. Okay, because of this, we cannot apply the classical Nike's contour, which look like something like this, as you remember. Okay, because Nike's contour cannot cross a pole or a zero. Okay, for this reason, what we need to do is simply using the modified version of the Nikus contour. Modified version of the Nikus contour has a notch at the origin. It's infinitely small, very small notch, which technically avoids the pole, but doesn't change the area or the majority of the region covered by the Nikus contour. Okay, so it has four parts, geometric axis, so infinite dimensional half circle, negative geometric axis, and notch. Okay, so let's continue and change it like this and try to find some answers. Okay, so let's start with the first one, which is basically the polar plot of the system. Okay, as you remember, g of s is equal to s plus 1 s squared. So what we need to do is we need to compute g of j omega, which is equal to j omega plus 1 divided by j omega square, which is quite simple. As you can see, this is 1 over omega square minus 1 over omega j. Okay, this is the real part. This is the imaginary part. And let's analyze real part and imaginary parts to understand the features of the polar plot. Okay, so first of all, since we know that omega is greater than 0, real part is always less than 0, and imaginary part is always less than 0. Okay, in this case, okay, if we change the color, we know that our polar plot will be located in this region. Not this, not this, not this. Everything will be in the third quadrant. Okay, so understanding and making this correct is very critical for uh, drawing the polar plot correct. Okay, then let's understand what happens to the polar plot in the extreme cases. Omega is going to zero and omega is going to infinity. Okay, so omega is going to zero, means that omega is approximately a very small, infinitely small number, let's say 0 0.0001 hertz or something like this. Okay, so in this case, as you can see, real part is going to minus infinity, right? Imaginary part is also going to minus infinity. Okay, so it's nice, it's good. Okay, so there's no problem with that. So we know that it will come from the minus infinity, but where? Oh, is it going to be like this, like this, or like this? We don't know. Okay, so it's kind of simple. And what we are going to do is let's look at the angle. Okay, so it's in the third quadrant. So how we can compute the phase or angle when omega is going to zero is simple. Okay, so technically g of j omega phase is equal to a tan imaginary part divided by real part, which is minus 1 over omega, minus 1 over omega square, plus pi, because it's in the third quadrant. Okay, so if we further look at the phase, we can see that it is equal to a tan, okay, so omega plus pi, or minus pi, it doesn't matter, or plus minus pi. And we know that omega is going to zero in this case. Phase of g of j zero is equal to minus pi. Okay, so it's kind of weird, right? Because the imaginary part is going to minus infinity, real part is going to minus infinity, but the real part is going faster. So technically, it will be something like this. Okay, so this is, let's say, r, which is going to infinity, but this is r square, it's also going to infinity, okay? 
So the important thing is that omega is going to zero, the phase of the g of g omega is equal to minus pi. Okay, it will be critical when we are drawing the notch. Okay, let's clean everything. And since we already covered some parts, or let's go to a clean page. Okay, so we kind of show that it is like this. This is where omega is going to zero. We know that this distance is infinity, but this distance is like infinite square. Okay. So let's make it like better. Infinity square. Okay. The second phase is understanding the behavior when omega is going to infinity. Okay. Infinity. Oh, sorry for that. So if you remember g of j omega is equal to minus 1 over omega square plus 1 over omega j. Okay. So what's happening? It's very simple. Real part is going to zero. Imaginary part is also going to zero. Okay, so it's good that we know it will be at the origin when omega is reaching infinity. Okay, sometimes we would like to understand which angle we arrive to the origin. Okay, so angle of arrival. In that case, let's look at the phase g of j omega in general is equal to, we you know that a ton. What was that? It's omega, I guess, right? Okay, it's going to infinity plus or minus pi. Okay, so omega is going to infinity. So it's this is going to, when omega is going to infinity, the phase of g of j omega is approaching to pi over 2 minus pi. So it's minus pi over 2. So technically, it will reach like this, okay? So this is the direction. This is the direction. Okay. So once you know the extreme behavior, so omega is going to zero and omega is going to infinity, since Nyquist plot generally gives you the smooth behaviors if you don't cross the imagine and uh, real axis, you simply fill in the blanks like this. Okay. And if you look at the technical magnitude, we know that magnitude is always decreasing. Because real part is always decreasing, image part is always decreasing, so this is an expected behavior. Okay, let's look at the result. It's correct, right? Okay, this is when omega is going to zero. As you can see, this is infinity, but this is r square. It's also infinity. It's going to zero, but with a like vertical angle. It's not going like this. Okay, it is going just from in this direction. Okay. So this is where omega is going to infinity, and in this direction, omega is going to zero. Okay, so this is technically the most important part in the next plot. Okay, the next phase is the mapping of the infinite dimensional half circle. Okay, so in our problems or in the systems that we assumed when we analyzed next plot, it will always be a dot when your polar plot ends. Okay. So I will show it, but it will be simply dot. And we don't even need to show this if in examples or midterms or homeworks, okay? It is simply a dot. It's very simple because, so g of s, okay? And let's write s as r e to j phi as a polar coordinate. We write this. g of r e to j phi is approximately equal to, I think it is 1 over r e to r j phi. And r is going to infinity. If you look at the magnitude, r e to j phi, it is approximately equal to zero. Okay. So for stellar tendons, our goal is understanding what happens around minus one. This zero point origin is far from minus one. We really don't care what happens in this infinite and small region of the pole plot. Okay. So let's get the uh, result. Yeah, it's true. So we are done with one and two. One and two now. It's three. G is simply the conjugate of the power plot, but of course we need to be careful with the direction. So what I do is I plot the conjugate. But as you can see, in 1 and 3, there's a continuum, right? Okay, so there's a continuum because and 1 going into infinity and 3 is going to infinity. So it is in this direction, not this. Okay, it's very important to uh, make the direction right. Okay, so let's clean that and let's finish the other training and this is the polar plot. But it's important to note that this is also 
infinity, right? And this is r square, it's also infinity. So these phases, these phases like g is equal to minus pi, g is equal to pi, okay? But pole plot is always in the third quadrant and mapping of the conjugate is always in the second quadrant. Okay, so let's look the other result, it's correct. Now, what we are need to do is, we need to use the notch to complete the next plot. Okay, so this is our notch. And in order to handle the notch, we will write it also in polar coordinates, such that S is equal to epsilon, which is very small, e to the j, let's say phi. Okay, we know that epsilon is tiny, and we know that phi is technically an angle which ranges from minus pi over 2 goes to pi over 2 in counterclockwise direction. Okay, so let's plug it. G of epsilon e to the j phi is equal to epsilon e to the j phi plus 1 epsilon square e to the minus 2 j phi. Since epsilon is small, this is approximately equal to 1 over epsilon. So this is plus, sorry for that. e to the, e to the power, so this is epsilon, minus 2 phi j. Okay, this is good. It's fine. So first of all, what is the this epsilon correct square? Uh, magnitude of this mapping is infinity. Magnitude also of magnitude, magnitude, let's say, g dot is approximately equal to 1 or epsilon square. It is equal to r square, r is infinity, it's going to infinity. Okay, because we know that this mapping will start from when the mapping of the third curve ends. Okay, it will start somewhere here. Okay, this is good. But what about the phase or direction? What's going to do? We know that its magnitude is r, so it was, will be infinite dimensional something. What happens to phase? Because this is 2 phi. We know that phi starts from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, so this will start from pi to go to minus pi, but because of the minus, it will do in clockwise, no, sorry, direction. Okay. Clockwise. Okay, so I can write this. Now I think I will in clockwise direction. Okay, it's nice. Okay, so this notch is counterclockwise direction because it's phi, but it is minus 2 phi, so it will be counterclockwise direction. Okay, so what are we going to do is, we know that the thing that goes from pi to minus pi is a almost full circle. I say it's almost because it don't touch the real axis. It has a magnitude of infinity. So the answer is very simple. So in order to finish the fourth uh, notch, we will need to draw a giant circle. Okay. Doesn't have to be a circle, but it's approximately a circle. Okay. And it is in, as you can see, clockwise direction. As you can see, our Nikos plot is always in clockwise direction and it is connected. So it is important in Nikos plot. So it will always need to be connected and closed paths. This is the basic idea. And this is the reason why we included notch here. Okay, so now once we finish the Nikos plot, and this is a, a better version, let's analyze it a little bit. Okay, it's closed. As you can see, it is like closed area is infinite dimensional, okay? But what is important for stability is simply the circulation of minus one. As you can see, the area covered in the next plot, it can be infinite dimensional, but it don't cover minus one. For this reason, we know that system is LIBO stable. 